in the sport of karate, there's a lot of weird rules. And in today's video, I'm gonna reveal the top three weirdest ones. One from Kyokushin Full Contact Karate. The second is from Olympic style WKF Karate. And the last one is from JKA Shotokan Karate. This is gonna be so much fun. Keep watching. Imagine this, you can kick somebody in the face full contact. You can knee somebody in the face full contact. Heck, you can even front flip straight into somebody's teeth. But you're not allowed to punch them in the face. That's the rule set of Kyokushin Karate. And this is why it might look so strange when you see people gut punching each other from French kissing distance but they never actually punch the face. This is literally what the rules state. Prohibited acts and techniques. Attacks with techniques using hands or elbows to the opponent's head, face, or neck. Even a slight touch. So why is this? Why are you not allowed to actually punch the face? Well, if you ask a Kyokushin Karate practitioner, they usually say that it's because it takes no skill to punch somebody in the face. Tell that to a boxer. <laughs> But I think the real reason is something known as osunoseishin. That literally means the spirit of pressing on or keep pushing. Because what Kyokushin Karate values the most is that you never give up. You gotta be tough as nails. That's why they do so much body conditioning and low kicks. And those really hurt, trust me. So while it might look strange to somebody who doesn't understand the rules, it makes sense if you understand the purpose of Kyokushin Karate. In other words, Kyokushin as a competitive form rewards toughness. It is not necessarily the best fighter who wins because then you would allow punches to the face, but actually the one who is the tougher fighter and who can switch that up with the skill required to kick, knee or front flip somebody in the face. While it's not allowed to punch the face when you compete in Kyokushin, if you practice it, I suggest you incorporate some face punching and blocking as well because it might come in handy if you actually have to use your skills in real life because karate is much more than just a sport. The second rule comes from the Olympic style World Karate Federation Kumite or fighting. <laughs> This is like the opposite of Kyokushin. It is not full contact at all. And if you knock somebody out, you might actually get disqualified yourself. That's why there's a lot of protective equipment being used because you can actually punch the face, but not too hard. Now, let me tell you about the ridiculous rule here. Grabbing the opponent with both hands for any other reason than executing a takedown upon catching the opponent's kicking leg is a category two violation. Meaning you can get disqualified for grabbing your opponent with two hands, unless it's for catching a kick. And this is why the clinching situation looks so weird when you look at the WKF fighting, because you're only allowed to grab with one hand, and that's if you plan on punching with the other. Otherwise, you gotta let go. Furthermore, the competitor may seize the opponent's arm or karate gi with one hand for purpose of executing a throw or a direct scoring technique. So you can throw somebody with one hand which is freaking impossible. But you get three points if you take somebody down and punch them. So people get these penalties all the time because the natural instinct when you're close to somebody is to grab them, to control them, to manipulate their center of gravity and throw them down. But you're not allowed to do that. And the reason this rule exists is because when karate became an official Olympic sport, they wanted to separate it from judo. So they don't want people grabbing each other and throwing because that already exists in judo. And that's why 95% of a WKF Kumite fight consists of a referee trying to separate or break up people because it's practically impossible to tell somebody to not grab their opponent when they're this close to each other. Imagine how spectacular it would be if you actually allowed proper throwing in WKF fighting. But I suspect the judo people don't wanna see that in the Olympics. Last but not least, we got a kata rule from the JKA organization of Shotokan 
karate. And this messed up a lot of stuff. You see, back in the days when karate started to get modernized, they wanted to introduce kata competitions. But karate was originally not made for competition, so it didn't suit the Japanese mindset. You see, everything needs to be neatly organized and perfectly arranged in Japanese culture. It's a culture of conformity. As the saying goes, the nail that sticks out gets hammered down. This becomes a problem because kata were not made to be neatly arranged into exhibition patterns. They were actually created to hand down self-defense techniques. But the JKA demanded that a kata should start and stop at the very same spot. Criteria for judging kata. D. Following the proper course of direction and accuracy in returning to the starting position or embusen, that's the line of performance. Points are deducted as per the following situations. E. The competitor is outside the one step allowance for coming back to the starting position of the embusen. In other words, starting and stopping on the same spot became really important when the JKA tournament started popping up all over Japan after the modernization of karate. This is why they changed a lot of kata. For example, there is a traditional kata called chinte, which is brutal and beautiful, but it doesn't end on the same spot that it started at. So when the Japanese wanted to start competing with this, they added these three ridiculous bunny hops at the end so that you would end up where you started. But these three bunny hops have no practical application whatsoever because that's not why they were added. And it becomes extra funny when you see people trying to make up reasons for how you could use these bunny hops in self-defense. Some people even make up ridiculous stories like your, your hands are tied by the samurai and you're jumping backwards through the rice fields to escape the ninjas or something. When in fact, it was just changed for competition. In fact, if you look at even older kata, like from Chinese Kung Fu, you will stop miles away from where you started because that really doesn't matter when it comes to the practical self-defense applications of the movement. The problem with these three ridiculous rules I've mentioned is that karate was not originally designed to be a sport. So when you try to take a highly pragmatic self-defense art and turn it into a combat sport, you have to make some sacrifices. And while these rules might seem ridiculous, perhaps that's the price we have to pay in order for the art to keep spreading. Because let's face it, time doesn't move backwards and if evolution didn't happen, perhaps none of us would even be practicing today. And if you wanna learn more about the original roots and origins of this beautiful art and sport, then check out some of my other videos to learn even more. Thank you so much for watching. Train hard, good luck, and have fun.